I'm in Malmo, Sweden, and I'm going to the library. This isn't your local neighborhood library. Yeah. Check this out. Does your library do that? And it probably doesn't look like this. But I came here today to see a very special collection. Hello, can I take out a transvestite, please? The transvestite is unavailable right now, but you're very welcome to borrow any other living book. The Living Library. Table of Contents. My name is Tommy Person, and I was a Ex-criminal. I'm Ludwig Lindstrom. I'm an animal rights activist. I'm Lena and I'm a feminist. My name is Kiki Anderson and I am a lesbian. Hello, I'm called Ayub Shibli and I am a Muslim imam. My name is Sarah, at least sometimes. All the other times I'm called Klaus. I'm transvestite. I'm from Myanmar and I'm enjoying my life. Chapter 1 talk to strangers. This is a, a methodology which gives you an opportunity to bring together these people who don't have a natural reason to meet each other and then uh, have a period of time within a setting where you're allowed to speak freely and you won't probably see this person after so nobody will hold it against you if you ask questions that are a little bit uh, shady or a little bit critical or, or a little bit uh, honest about your prejudices about other people. Chapter 2. Face your prejudice. So I'm going to borrow Ludwig, the animal activist. Hello, Ludwig. Hi. May I sit down? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Do you think there are many prejudices against uh, animal activists? Yeah, definitely. Because people think that we are aggressive, that we do illegal stuff, and uh, that we are militant. And it's actually the other way around. We are against violence. We cannot judge the religion through uh, a group of people who are very extreme, but we should judge the people through the uh, acting in life as a majority. I used to wear my sister's clothes. I've done it all my life and I've, it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel comfortable, at ease. Why? I don't know. Yeah. I think there are many different ways of feeling good. Some people play golf, some people climb mountains, jump in parachutes, or you do things. And, and you like to dress And I well. found that I feel good when I do this. Chapter 3. Start asking questions. What's the thing about the book is it's written in advance. Uh, you can't change what you're being told. When you meet a person, you're able to stop something and say, oh, oh, that's not the information I want. I want some other information. You get the personal impression. You shake their hand. You have a, a human experience. Prejudice shows up when you don't ask. All your life, your children, your, your parents, your teachers, here in the library, church, television, papers, everybody tells you things all the time. You believe in it. But the day that you say, well, I wonder if this is a fact. I wonder what it's really like. And you ask, you start asking questions. Then you start programming your own brain. Chapter 4. Listen to your book. Do you think this is also important for you to be able to speak to people about your own experience? Yes, it is very important uh, because I think that I have been, I have hide myself for about 30 years now and I want to come out and it cost me a lot. These books are people who want to be understood, they want to share uh, the way the world meets them with other people, to have other people understand how they are perceived and maybe even understand the misunderstandings so that they can be, well, truly understood, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Conclusion. Be yourself. The Living Library is not to build a, a, like an exhibition of rare species. That it's, it's not about putting together 
uh, bizarre people, extraordinary types, or it's it's more about showing the the the, the dimensions to these perceptions that we have that nothing is black and white, that there are so many shades of gray, and with people that's definitely true. Is it better to be a copper? Why not be an original? And I used to say, be yourself. Everybody else is already taken.